This is the second year that I have taken my 10-year-old C100 Mark II and tried to replicate a few shots from whatever film wins the Oscar for Best Cinematography. This year was a bit more disastrous compared to last. But I will say that I'm in good company. Nolan himself has had IMAX cameras destroyed on set. Fortunately, the only thing damaged on my set was the camera battery and my pride. But let's get into the project. Can I replicate Oscar-winning frames shot on 65mm IMAX film with a camera that can't even record 4K and get a perfect match? I think we all know the answer is no, but how close can I get? Here are the shots that I decided to try to replicate. I learned my lesson from last year and knew that I needed bigger and more powerful lights, especially when filming a dark scene. So this time I used an Aperture 300C, two 60Xs, and then some softboxes, diffusers, etc. Now at first blush, this shot looks like it used nothing but available light. That is possible, but not certain. Notice all of this light hitting the face but with a soft shadow fall off. My guess is they used a giant bounce or diffusion screen. When we tried to replicate it, we immediately found that the sun alone was casting too harsh of shadows on Lucas's face here, and we absolutely needed diffusion. Now we could have tried to simply diffuse the sun, but I wanted to use the 300C for more control of light intensity as needed, not knowing how all of the shot would come together. We started with a giant 60 inch modifier on the light, but quickly discovered that there was too much diffusion and I couldn't get the angle quite, quite, quite white. I couldn't get the angle quite, quite right. I couldn't quite get the right angle. The light is almost coming more three quarters in front of him rather than from the side. Notice the angle of the nose shadow here and how much light hits this cheekbone. If it had been completely from the side, the shadows would have looked very different. So the 60 inch softbox was definitely in the way. We tried the diffusion cloth from the softbox and experimented with different distances from the light, but it was still cutting way too much light out. Finally, by using an extremely thin paper napkin, we were able to achieve the right roll off of the shadow and intensity of light on the face. Apply a color grade and a letterbox to the image and we get this. Here's the original, and here is our shot. Now, I'm pretty pleased with this. I would say that the C100 Mark II's lack of dynamic range really manifests itself here in the sky to shadow, as does its much lower resolution and bit depth. 8-bit HD footage is no match for 65mm IMAX film when it comes to everything, but including smoothness and number of colors. Now the lens is a huge difference maker between these shots. Notice how milky soft the bokeh is for the Oppenheimer shot compared to my Sigma 18-35. to The shape and the amount of the bokeh is pretty stark between these two. Let's go on to the next shot. This was tricky in a number of ways. At first blush, it looks like a higher angle dark shot lit almost entirely from behind Murphy. In framing the shot up, we quickly figured out that the camera is almost right at eye level with Murphy. Look how much you can see up in his eye cavity. Not only that, but look at the shadow on his face that his finger casts. There has to be a lot of light hitting his face in order for this finger to cast that stark and sharp of a shadow. But also notice that his shirt is still heavily cloaked in shadow, as is the front side of his face compared to the back of his head. So this is a high contrast shot, but still plenty of light is being used in front. Now, unfortunately, by the time we got this shot, the sun had set, so the window we were using had lost all of its light, and we didn't have time or gear to hit this window with a lot of light. We experimented around with bouncing the light from in front to hit Lucas on the back versus using two different lights, one in front and one in back. Not surprisingly, we landed on the two light solution. Actually, we did three lights. Our most powerful light, the 300C, we put as a hair light or rim light because that needed to be the brightest light. Next, we used a 60X and smaller softbox for that fill light on the face, and finally a 60X and larger diffusion for the back wall. Unfortunately, because of the time of day we were filming, we didn't get the contrast of light that Oppenheimer has. But that's what color grading is for, right? Fix it in post, as I never want to have to say, but I did. 
So here is the shot with the color grade. There is definitely something off with the skin tones and I can't tell if this is a lighting thing, a camera thing, a white balance thing, or what. Also, our finger shadow was still not as stark or sharp as the original. I don't know if there was a lot of light on set and some major ND filters in use or what, but we shot ND and still didn't get enough light in there apparently. I am very pleased with the backlighting on the side of Lucas's face that we achieved. I feel that it is pretty close match to the original. You can see how much light we were pumping into the shot and yet how dark we were able to make it. This is one of the biggest takeaways I've had both years I've done this project. You typically need a lot of light to craft a really great shot. Now I don't mean that you need a lot of lights but a significant amount of light on set. The more light, the more control you get over the look of everything. You can tweak contrasts of background and foreground or eliminate unwanted noise from your shadows. By hitting Lucas with some light on his face as a fill, rather than only lighting him from behind, I was able to get good detail in his face. Had I not done this, I probably would have ended up with lots of digital noise there, which is really bad. And now for the last shot we attempted, the bane of the evening. Not only did I nearly destroy my camera and a light, but I didn't get this shot in focus and definitely failed to mimic the lighting as well. I think the camera accident really flustered me, as did the fact that we were running out of time on the evening. But let's go through what went well and what didn't in trying to replicate this shot. I knew going in that this would be the hardest of the three. The light on the far side of the face is again the strongest, but it is still diffused. As hard as the light looks, Murphy's forehead reveals that there is still a hint of softness there. I think we got that well in our version, but honestly, we could have brightened that light. The house we were filming against had a more glossy paint, which was a huge difference between the two images here. I also struggled to get a big soft roll off of light on the house. I think I needed that 60 inch softbox, but I didn't have the time or space to set it up. We didn't have access to the inside of the house, but if we did, we would have needed a much brighter light source in that window. Finally, I completely failed to get the hair light on the backside of my talent. Murphy's facial features are more pronounced than Lucas's, which help, but even still, we needed much more light hitting that backside from over his shoulder. Actually, having the camera in focus certainly would have done much to improve the shot, and I wish I could go back and try this one again. I think I might need a 1200D with a gel for the window though. Certainly a bigger modifier for the key light, and then a much brighter hair light. Well, there you have it. All in all, a really fun project and one I can't wait to attempt again next year. Lighting was one of my biggest weaknesses last year and something I focused on and improved upon this year. Maybe next year I'll try focusing on focusing and taking better care of my equipment. You can check out last year's video here or anything else YouTube is recommending to you here. I hope this video was helpful to you because though I won't be seeing you in the next one, you're sure to see me rough.